So over 100,000 refugees are estimated to be among those who have now crossed to neighboring countries. The United Nations is warning of a full-blown humanitarian catastrophe in Sudan. It estimates the number of people fleeing could rise to 800,000 if the violence doesn't end. Deadly fighting between two military factions is now into its third week. And that spiraling violence is forcing thousands to flee the country. While hundreds of Canadians made it out, some 200 more remain trapped there and are seeking assistance from Ottawa. Air evacuations have been halted. Canadians could consider going to Port Sudan. We have a team right now of armed forces along with key diplomats that are there. But it's not just foreign nationals affected. Millions of Sudanese are now caught in the crossfire between two warring factions. Kate Nolan is Deputy Director of Sudan Operations at Doctors Without Borders. We've reached her in Nairobi, Kenya. Kate Nolan, uh, Doctors Without Borders staff on the ground in Sudan have described the situation there as catastrophic. What, what more can you tell us about the, the humanitarian crisis in Sudan? We know that ongoing violence continues in many parts of Sudan. Um, Doctors Without Borders or Medicines and Frontiers teams on the ground report that hospitals are overwhelmed and thousands of people are fleeing to safer areas. People are either um, displaced internally within Sudan or are fleeing across international borders in search of international protection. And already we have started to see immense medical and humanitarian needs. How is the fighting impacting your ability to, to provide care on the ground with, with all of those needs that are that are there? Um, large parts of Sudan have experienced ongoing violence since the 15th of April, including gunfire, shelling and airstrikes. We we know that some people remain trapped and other people are fleeing to safer areas. The pressure on hospitals is, is intense and many hospitals face shortages. We know that staff are unable to get to facilities because the fighting is too intense. Or we know that many facilities have been damaged due to the fighting. We also know that many people are cut off from medical care at a time in which they need it the most. Um, as Doctors Without Borders, as Medicines on Frontier, um, we are able to continue our life-saving work. Um, we have been able to make donations to a total of five facilities in Khartoum since the outbreak of the, the current escalation of violence. Uh, we're also able to, to run some of our existing um, supported hospitals in places such as El Fashir, which is the capital of, of North Darfur. But in order for us to be able to scale up and respond to the level of needs that we're seeing, we need to have um, assurances around the safety of our staff and our patients. Are, are you getting any of those assurances? And given the volatility of the situation, could you even count on those assurances? Because we've even seen gunfire and fighting in what is supposed to be ceasefire periods. Um, I think it's important to say at the outset that um, Doctors of Borders, uh, MSF, does not plan to leave Sudan. We're assessing where and how we can begin to scale up this response to ensure that we, we have... Um, teams on the ground who are able to provide life-saving assistance to people who need it most. Um, we are able to continue our life-saving work in many locations, but to do so, we need to be able to ensure the, the safety and security for our staff and for our patients. Um, we also have experienced emergency teams who are ready to, to support the scale-up, and we're preparing the, the best ways for us to be able to bring in people and supplies um, into the country. But as I said, um, we remain committed to providing much-needed health care to the people in Sudan, especially during these, these moments of crisis. But to do so, we need to be able to ensure the safety and security of our staff and our patients. I'm reading some of the dispatches from your organization, from what they're seeing in, in the hospitals. In one, they talk about operating theaters being unable to cope with the nonstop influx of trauma and emergency obstetrics, a maternity wards with two women per bed, and a pediatric hospital having been looted to the point that it's not safe to send newborns there with sepsis. I, I, how does this compare to what you've seen in, in other crisis areas? I mean, as, as I said, I think... We, we know that even prior to the current escalation of, of violence, that the, the health system in Sudan was already overstretched. 
We fear that this this current escalation is now pushing it to a tipping point, that the, the healthcare system is on the is on the point of collapse. Um, in addition to our own teams, of course, we're we're in touch with with other um, other organisations, with Sudanese medical associations, and we know that um, many hospitals, unfortunately, have been damaged or destroyed. We know that hospitals are. Um, really um, overwhelmed. We know that there are shortages of essential um, essential supplies in addition to services such as water, electricity that are needed to be able to, to provide these services to, to people. We also know that medical staff have been working around the clock. We, we know that staff have been working non-stop and are absolutely exhausted. We know that there are other staff who who work to, to their hospital or to their healthcare centre, but are unable to be able to to reach those places due to the ongoing violence and insecurity. And we know that many people are are in need of of these life saving services, but are concerned about their own safety and fear and moving outside their homes to search for healthcare in one of the few remaining facilities that are open. I, I know you say you don't want to leave Sudan or you have no intentions of leaving Sudan, but you're already doing impossible work and, and it seems like the conflict could make that work actually impossible to do. Uh, is, there, is there a tipping point where you just have to consider suspending operations uh, because of the safety and security uh, of your team on the ground? I mean, we, we have evacuated some of our teams to, to safer locations. Of course, um, the priority um, for us is the, the safety of, of our staff and our patients. Um, our, we are very worried about our Sudanese colleagues, about patients and civilians who are trapped in this conflict. Our thoughts are with them, and we reiterate our calls to all parties to the conflict to avoid civilian areas and to spare civilian lives. As I mentioned before, um, I think it's it's vital for us to have these assurances from all parties to the conflict that um, humanitarian staff, um, healthcare workers, and health facilities will not be targeted by the violence. And these are the basic minimums that we need in order to be able to work safely, to be able to provide life ca- life saving assistance to people who need it most in in in, in such times. Is there something you need from, from the Western world, from donors? Do you need money? Do you need supplies? What, what would you need to help make the job uh, easier or more viable in Sudan? Well, of course, um, I, as I said, um, what we have already started to see, so MSF teams are, are on the ground. We're already starting to respond to the needs of people who are internally displaced because of this crisis in, in cities such as Wad Madani, which is a city to the south of, of Khartoum, which has been a, a place that has received many people who have fled the, the, the violence from Khartoum. Um, we also support existing facilities and we want to continue this work. But of course, in order for us to be able to continue our existing work, which was already needed when the healthcare system was already under strain and the, the humanitarian needs in Sudan were the, the highest in a decade. So, of course, we, we need resources in order to be able to do that. So it's essential for us to be able to have resources to, to purchase um, equipment and supplies to, to allow us to deliver these life-saving activities, in addition to the, the, the security assurances that allow all of our staff to be able to move safely into the country and within the country. Kate Nolan, uh, Deputy Director of Sudan Operations at Doctors Without Borders, I want to thank you for your work and thank you for your time. Thank you.